Hola amigos, bienvenidos a Marcas y Mercados. Hoy día me acompaña Mark Pollard. Mark es un estratega publicitario. Él ha escrito un libro que se llama Strategy is your words. Y este libro ha roto ventas eh, más de tres veces. Está traducido en tres idiomas. Y tengo el privilegio hoy día de entrevistarlo. Mark, thanks for being here with us. Pleasure, I'm excited. <laughs> Mark, I've been seeing uh, many of your posts on social media and you pose a series of questions that are the genuine fears of people who work in this industry, such as my creative brief is boring, what should I do? And the truth is that every time I read a brief, besides being full of data, uh, it doesn't say anything beyond what I can grab and work on something innovative, bold, sparkling, actually. Yeah. How do we help people um, who see us to write briefs with content? Yeah, so how do you write better creative briefs? Well, let's talk, let's talk about the past decade. Okay. Because the problem, or some of the problems with the past decade is that there's too much data. Mm -hmm. A lot of people use the word without knowing what they're saying. Because data is nothing until you use it, at which point it's not data, it's information. There's this pyramid, the data, information, knowledge, wisdom pyramid, D-I-K-W. But people use this word to assert themselves over other people. And simultaneously what's happened is people who maybe operate from more of an intuitive, instinctive, creative place have retreated a little bit because the data bullies are so strong. Mm -hmm. And all that happens, and I see this because I do a lot of training, I work with a lot of companies, is that there is not as much creativity as there could be and as there needs to be in business. And then when it comes to the marketing departments or even advertising agencies, it's, it's really hard for people to put provocative thinking on the table because mm -hmm. it's generally so conservative out there. Yes, but uh, the weird thing or, or the thing that most uh, impressed me is that creative is king. And what we are doing in briefs are we are putting the information that we have, but we are not having a strategic way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of reporting going on. So let's say for a creative brief, you do a whole bunch of research. Often the documents that have the word strategy or creative brief in them They're just reporting. They're like, here are the 10 bullets, bullet points of information that I found. And part of that's about training, part of it's about culture, part of it's about fear. A lot of people fear going extinct right now. It's, it's you know, with artificial intelligence, with the way that the agency world is shaking itself up, etc. cetera. Um, people are scared also, this is partly cultural and partly psychological, to understand that it's, you need to collect all that information but then there are little lateral leaps, little mm -hmm. moments of ideas or creativity that have to happen in strategy. Otherwise, all you're doing is analyzing and reporting. Yes, yeah. and, that's the, and that's why the name of your book, Strategy is Your Words. Mm. Why? It's a strange title, by the way. I remember when I sat down, it was five years ago, almost to the month that I sat down to write it, and I knew that I had to use the word strategy because if I don't use the word strategy, in the world, no one pays attention to me. So I was like, I have to use that word. And then I thought, well, what do I keep talking about? And I was like, I keep talking about words, using better language, simpler language, more visual language. But I thought about it and I was like, hang on, am I writing a book about strategy and words? Because that seemed really obvious. Mm -hmm. And so I had to fight with myself. So I was like, yeah, but you keep talking about it because it's such a big issue out there. And the issue is that people try to sound like a strategist. Hmm. They try to sound expensive and intellectual and educated and use lots of big language, but without saying anything. And so that's where this book comes the, in. Yeah, the words, I mean, it's the meaning. Hmm. It's the meaning that we need to put into our briefs so they can be bold and yeah. sparkling and creative. There are a couple of scenes that we as advertisers Uh, do sometimes yeah uh, in your experience which which are those I feel like right now the biggest sin is to be boring <laughs> but also I would partner that with 
we have to appreciate the people who do the boring work because a, a lot of us who like ideas and like to be creative, we get bored easily, but we need people around us who can work through the bureaucracy, work through the systems. But right now I'd say like, if you're writing a creative brief and you're yawning before you've shared it with anybody, mm -hmm. I guarantee the people you share it with will also be yawning. And then you just have to ask yourself, what are you doing with your life? Mm -hmm. because it's, that's not the point of, of strategy or account planning and advertising. Yes. Um, do you do a lot of research? When I'm working with a brand, yeah. So I largely do training right now, but when I work with brands, I focus on, on interviews. So mm -hmm. I'll usually do somewhere between 20 to 40, 45 minute uh, interviews because most companies I work with, they have a lot of data. Mm -hmm. And what they come to me for is we have all this information, but we don't really know what our strategy is, even though we have 10 decks with the word strategy on them. Mm -hmm. So I come in and I try to approach it a little bit more journalistically than academically, a little bit more like a psychologist than, uh, you know, too formal and academic point of view on things. Because I'm looking to catch words from people. So, yeah. Yeah, because the, there you're going to find the insights, actually. Because yes. people have to be in the center. Otherwise, our brands are not going to be sell. Yeah. And let me, let me give you a quick example, okay? Because mm -hmm. this is an example that I like to use. And it's a little, it's a little bit relevant to, to me, actually. I was interviewing men about losing hair about eight years ago. And a gentleman said to me, I don't feel accomplished enough to be bald. You know, and so that's an interesting sentence to me because if you think about what an idea is, an idea typically brings together at least two topics. In that one sentence, we have achievement or accomplishment mm -hmm. and boldness or hair loss. Okay, so that's interesting because it's an idea. It's not an idea from a creative department, but it's an idea. But there's a sense of confession and, and a little bit of pain and humor. It's all of these emotions at once. Yes. And I just think it's such a lovely sentence to focus people's attention on because everyone's so caught up in all the trends and having these big words, these big labels for the top 10 trends of this year and that year and sounding too expensive and official. And it's like often it's just these gentle sentences that help us understand someone or the world differently that they're always there. Yes, they're simple. Yeah. And they have to be there. But we, we, do the, the, we, we, uh, the complicate, we, how can I say this? Um, well, whatever. <laughs> well, we, we, we often yeah, over-engineer, right? Yes, it's over, be over engineering. Because to complicate something that's easy helps us to feel smart. And then to feel smart, we feel like we're being, you know, we're worth paying for. So there's mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on. But once you get through that in life, but also in this industry, it's way more fun. Yes, and that's another thing that we were talking with my friends earlier, and it's about fear. We, yeah. we feel a lot of fear, and our clients feel fear of what they're, they're going to do. So how can we handle the fear? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think you've got to deal with it explicitly within your culture. So, for example, one of the best known, I call him a chief creative officer, although he's an entrepreneur now, uh, one of the best known chief creative officers, Anshomo Ramosh, he will talk about, we don't believe we have an idea unless we think we need to call a lawyer. Mm. All right? So that's a really useful rule of thumb. Why? Because it means the idea hasn't been done before. There's a sense of risk. There's the unknown. And so I think to navigate through fear, One is, as a leader, you've got to create a, a sense of safety in your group, mm -hmm. right? Psychological safety matters, otherwise we're in fight or flight all the time. Two is if you want people to take risks, and I know people have an issue with that word when it comes to creativity, mm -hmm. but if you want people to take risks, make it a very bold, clear part of your culture, which means having questions like in shell mm -hmm. And then if you have team meetings, what's one thing you've tried in the past week and how did it go? You build it into the interaction so mm -hmm. that people know it's an expectation. Yeah, it's good. And um, what will be your best counsel to the people that is studying right now and they want to be marketers? What will be your 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 good thing to 
give them? Uh, well, if someone's studying marketing and they, they want to be in a big business as a marketer or a business person, I would just encourage them to keep their creative spirit alive. Because often it's the creative spirits who are attracted to marketing and if they're not careful over 10 or 20 years, that creative spirit gets extinguished. Mm -hmm. So start there. Keep painting. If you're into pottery, keep doing pottery. If you're into drawing, keep drawing. And the, the second thing is to really enjoy provocative, clear writing. There's a little bit of research out there that talks about how being articulate will help you get ahead in life. Mm -hmm. To be articulate, it helps to write, sometimes for the sake of writing. But read books on writing, try to write things for the sake of it online, and over time you'll build a reputation, you'll build a network, but you'll be a clearer thinker as well. And that's the thing that I'm, that I'm pretty scared of. It's about uh, artificial intelligence. Next generations, they are not going to even know how to write because this AI will do it for them. And I feel that's very risky because it's um, to write, it's a, a cognit com cognitive uh, mm. process that mm -hmm. we do because it's about thinking. Yes. So I'm pretty scared of this AI and I think it's over overrated as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say two things on that. One is I see a lot of like how to use AI and strategy posts on LinkedIn. And I have to admit that if I was pitching against you and you're using a lot of artificial intelligence to write creative briefs or for strategy, I would love that. Mm -hmm. I would love it because it's super generic right now. That'll change. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think the second thing is I believe in humanity. You know, we're creative people, uh, we're a creative species. And if you look at history, every time a new domain appears or humans get to the edge of a domain, that's like, like the planet Earth, we build rockets and we fly off the planet. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we're going to get there. There probably will be a five to 10 year phase. And unfortunately, it's probably going to affect a lot of the kids, like a lot of the teenagers who've had a tough time through the pandemic and haven't developed social skills and maybe yeah. they're not developing writing skills and all the test scores are down. And there's a whole group of people that have had a, t like a, a specifically tough time over the past few years when it comes to this, this type of stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm a bit nervous for them. Yeah. Well, thank you very much Pleasure. for this. We have to, to run to another place. So, gracias. Gracias, amigos, por estar con nosotros. Este es el libro de, de Mark. Les recomiendo que lo busquen. Está en Amazon. Está en tres idiomas. En inglés, en castellano y en portugués. Así que no tienen excusa. Realmente hay información súper valiosa que les puede ayudar a escribir con sentido y a ser más creativos. Nos vemos en el próximo programa. Gracias.